Hello and welcome back to College Algebra Online. Um, and in this video, we're going to work with uh, My Math Lab and go through um, the process of uh, working with your homework and what to look for in the My Math Lab site. So, once we click on here, I'm in, in the Moodle site. Once we click on the My Math Lab site, it should take me to this site, which then you would then click in Sign In. So, once you sign in to the thing, you use your username and password, it should take you to this kind of site. Now, um, I've been enrolled in several terms of Math 111 since I've taught several terms of Math 111 online. Um, I'm going to open up the current term, which is the summer term 2016. You won't see these other two terms yourself. If you have other math or other courses that you've used, um, then you'll see those courses still enrolled as long as they're still open. So um, I'm going to open the summer 2016 term. You might only see that one thing. Once we do that, you should see a window that opens up like this. All right, and it has your homework. You know, it has some quizzes and tests, the grade book. All of these things are um, menus that you can go through. Um, on this on this part, uh, what I would be doing is I would be looking at homework and maybe the grade book and course tools if you want to look at the or, or content or chapter contents if you want to look at the book online. You can also go there for that. So we have a calendar of different upcoming events. Um, it has due dates for your upcoming events here. You can scroll through the calendar and see the um, due dates. If you see if you see a little clock that tells you it's going to be due. Now um, I have just put everything online for the first week, um, but these things will be moving due dates um, into the future due dates. There will be some on Saturday. You'll see them change. Right now I've just entered them all on the first date, but I will be changing those in the next couple days. Before you get on it, you'll see different due dates. So um, I'm going to look at, I just entered them all in right here at this one, so they're all listed here. Um, I'm going to go into one of these and we're going to look at some homework and we'll see what that looks like. Now this also shows your progress on your homework, how much you've turned in. It tells you how you're scoring on your homework. Um, if you are having problem with your browser, you might want to run this browser check. Um, you also may want to see how you enter answers or learn about how to enter in the notation. You could click on this link as well to help you enter the answers in correctly because most of the times that's where students have the most difficulty is entering in their answers incorrectly or just misinterpreting the, the different um, terms that they have to put in, different notation. All right, so we're going to look at an example of an assignment. I'm going to go to uh, section 1.4. We'll open that up. We're going to go on to question number nine. Right now we see that I haven't done anything on this at all, but we'll, let's look at question number nine. We open it up. The question is loading and hopefully we will have a question here soon to look at. All right, so we're on question nine. It shows that up here. These, it shows how many questions are on here. We can see if we go all the way to the end, that's, there are 10 questions, or there's 12 questions on here. But we're gonna look at number nine. Over here is how we could enter in different things. If we wanna enter in a fraction, we could click on this and it'll give us a fraction notation. Um, it can give us a mixed number notation. We can put in absolute values if we need to. Um, we could put in ordered pairs if we wanted to put in ordered pairs. All of that is there. There's also more here if we need any quality symbols or anything else, square root symbols, uh, symbols like infinity or pi, okay, triangle symbols. Those symbols are under more. All right, um, if we have a problem in this 
So it says find an equation aligned with the given properties x intercept of 4 and y intercept of negative 5. So we're supposed to type in our answer in slope intercept form. So it's so that's going to be y equals mx plus b or slope times x plus the intercept. So we can um, if we have a problem with that, so um, our x-intercept is 4, our y-intercept is negative 5. That means we're going to, um, the slope is going to be um, a fraction. Okay, so um, because your y-intercept is negative 5, it's down here. If we were to look at the graph, the y-intercept is 5, the x-intercept is 4. It's going to rise 5 and run 4. So your slope is 5 fourths, so we would need a fraction there, and we'd put in 5 fourths, oops, 5 fourths, um, x minus 5, because that's the y-intercept. Okay, so that's what would be if you put it in fraction form. All right, if you're not sure, let's try checking this. Check the answer. Fantastic, I got that one right. Now if we get, um, we can go to the next question or we can go to another question. If we have a problem, we can say, help me solve this. It will go through a process. It will show you what to do. It will say, find the slope. And then it will ask you to do that once you've determined what that is. Then it will ask you to go through some parts on how to figure out what the answer to this is. So that's how we can do that if we want to help you solve this one here. If you want to view an example, it'll look at a different example and it'll take you through the whole example where you don't have to do many much work. You just can actually push continue and it will figure out every step. So help me solve this is where you have to do some work as it's doing the problem, which is helping you solve that. And view an example is a different problem where they're actually going through the whole thing. Now you can click on the textbook, it'll take you to the section. You can click Ask My Instructor. If you click on this, it will send me an email and I will get your question and, and then I can respond to that. So you can send me a question if you're having a problem with how this is answered. I've answered several questions on this in the past. So that's how you would do um, do the homework. You want to work through all of the problems. You can go in any order you want as you work through them. You can click on the, the next problem on the process. You can then um, work through them at any order. You can start with 1, you can start with 12. Um, you can work at any pace you want. You can start in section 1.2. Um, if you'd like and work your way around. Okay, so that's how you do your homework. All right, and if we go back to this spot, you can see it's checked off that we did question number nine. All right, the other place you can look for your homework is on the homework tab. And when you click on the homework tab, this is what you'll get. You'll have the list of all your homework, what sections they are, when they're due. You'll be able to see all the homework for the whole term. Um, in an order, you're going to do the orientation and you're working on this, these sections here as you see them. So this gives you uh, how many attempts you've made, what your score is, how much t time you've spent on them. All right, so you can click on your homework there and you'll also see that. Now you can also click on the gradebook. The gradebook will allow you to see your grades as you progress through each of these sections. So I shouldn't have any grades because I don't have any, I haven't done any work yet, but if as you go through your sections and complete them, you should see your grades under this gradebook section. Okay. Now, if you find a need to look at the book online, you can click on co course contents, chapter contents here, and then you can go to, let's say I was stuck on section 1.4 and I wanted to look at it. 
you can click here you can watch videos about 1.4 you can do the e you can look at the actual textbook if you click on the textbook itself it will load up the textbook um, for section 1.4 and this should look exactly like the book if you purchased a book it should actually look like the textbook that you have purchased so and it just allows you to scroll through the book and look at each section so we're still loading the book but it should look very similar to actually it should look exactly the same unless you have an older book that you purchased this is the sixth edition so we'll see the sixth edition loaded uh, my internet seems to be taking a long time in loading the book, but we want to take a look at it here in section 1.4. So here we are, and this is the start of 1.4 right here, and it tells you the objectives, and this is what the book should look like. So we can go through page by page, just click on the next page. We can select and see how to figure out the slope, how to find the equation of the slope with two points. And as we go through this, this just gives us all of chapter one or section 1.4. It looks just like the book in PDF format. And you can go over here and you can look at different chapters. Here, as we go through this, we can make it larger or smaller. Um, we can scroll around in the text. So this is what it would look like if you went to that section uh, 1.4 in your book and clicked on your e-textbook. There's also videos from the text you can download as well. So that's what it looks like on contents. All right, so those are the basic things you would want to use. Your home page, your homework page, your content page, and your um, grade book. Those are the main sections that I think you'd run into most of the things. You can also explore the other sections here if you'd like. But those are the main sections you're going to use through the course. Okay. But if you have any questions, send me an email. I'll be willing to help you out there um, as much as I can or come by Wednesday.